Yeah, you know, it's 42 days before the first game, obviously. The new the rule we've adapted three or four years ago, and so we get 30 practices before our first game. We open up with Alcorn State. We'll have a, a closed scrimmage, which I don't even think I can even say the opponent's name around uh, that week, 20th, 25th of October, and then we'll have an exhibition game against West Georgia. So uh, we're the healthiest that we've been in a long time, still not all the way there, but feel really good about our team. We've had a good September. Septembers are hard for every college basketball player, and they should be. I mean, the conditioning aspect, strength and conditioning part of it, uh, you know, trying to get their bodies in shape to where now when we start officially, you know, they're going to be able to go through, you know, some some good, tough physical practices uh, here and, and throughout college basketball. So our guys have been, have been great. Uh, Probably the best depth that we've had since we've been here. Uh, I love our leadership and our locker room. I think we've got a good combination of, of youth and experience and returning guys. So, uh, so like you said, every, every first day is good, even though we've been on a foreign tour. Uh, we've had a lot of practices in the summer. Uh, but look forward to getting it started today. Deshaun said that he thought he'd be cleared maybe by October 10th, if I'm quoting him right. Um, are you pretty confident in that day as well? Yeah, I think so. He's getting really close. Neil, you know, he probably told you he's kind of cleared for all non-contact right now. Like we had a little uh, kind of a walk through this morning uh, that's not contact, and he'll go, you look at him, and you don't think anything's wrong, you know. But I think the knee is, is doing great. I think it's the leg strength around the knee. He's worked really hard, getting real close. So I, I, I'm like you, Neil, what Deshaun said. I Hopefully by the 11th or 12th, he's, he's back going. You mentioned that overseas trip. What did you kind of learn about your team? Yeah, you know, it, it was good that, you know, we had, you know, the guys that didn't play, uh, and, and Ty Fagan was limited, so we really got a chance to see a lot of the, the new guys, you know, Maury Abrams and TJ, uh, the emergency of, of James White, you know, really had, had a good trip. Uh, it's the most athletic team we've had around the rim. Uh, I think shot blocking is such a premium now in college basketball because of the analytics of threes and rim twos. And so uh, I think it has a chance to be, you know, potentially the best shot blocking team that we've had, which is a great thing. Uh, and again, even with the loss of other guys, I thought our depth was good. And so that's something that we got a chance to see. But pl playing a lot faster in transition. Uh, now, those games are a little skewed because of, you know, kind of the defensive get, getting back or transition from, from the other teams that we've played, uh, but we will. You'll see a faster athletic team in transition. So I guess what's the challenge for him to try and now carry that over here now to the season? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a big confidence builder for James. I think that, you know, like guys that now have a little success like that, he's got to understand he's not going to average 24 a game in the SEC, you know, and not 24 for us. Nobody in the league really does. Uh, but, you know, you just got to channel it. Uh, we've talked a lot about, uh, we, for everybody, about being a really, really good player without the ball. You know, the, the old uh, analogy of a guy can go two for 11 and play 35 minutes and he missed nine shots and his world is crushed. And you ask him how long it took him to take those nine shots, he'd say about 18 or 20 seconds. So now you've had about 33, 34 minutes without the ball in your hands. How do you affect the game when you're not shooting it? And so I think that's the biggest kind of thing for, for all players, you know, that James can score it, but he's got to affect the game defensively, you know, the basketball IQ part. Uh, but, he, but he had, he's put in a lot of great time, and uh, I know he's looking forward to today's practice. Yeah, you know, uh, I think this is that still how important returning players are. You know, how important it was for us to get Robert Allen back healthy that we had, you know, just his spirit in the gym. It really helped us. So really, you know, managing official visits, the number of official visits. Uh, how many 24s do you visit when you think you may have so many in the portal in, in April and May? I think we're all still trying to get a great grasp of that. Uh, the NBA draft could have a play on our team and other teams, you know, in the spring. Uh, so I, I still think you have to have a blend, but I know one thing, you still need really good high school players. And, uh, 
and I think we, we have this in this class. Hopefully we're adding a, a, another really good class for, for 23. Uh, so we're still learning. Uh, but I do like the blend now of kind of the six four and and then the uh, and then the transfers that we have. What do you hope to get or expect expectations out of Jamin this this second year? Yeah, I mean Jamin's conditioning, his body, uh, his ability to defend is really really improved. Uh, you know, I think Jamin, you know, obviously as a stretch four really needs to to be able to shoot the ball from three well. Something he works on quite a bit. I just see his leadership. I hear his voice so much better than, than we did last year. Uh, he's been unbelievable in our locker room. And uh, so I think all the toughness things that, that need to go into it, uh, I think he's really improved. So, uh, I, like, again, I think he's another guy that's really looking forward to today's practice. And like everything, you know, you compete within your team. You compete against the opponents. But, you know, obviously we've been in competition. So there's some great competition at all the spots. Coach, you mentioned his name, Robert Allen. What, what can you tell us about the progress he's made since coming back from that scary injury? And what, what's kind of his participation status, I guess, in practice? Yeah, you know, he's, he's kind of defied all odds. A guy that kind of injury, you know, sometimes it's a year over, you know. And, uh, you know, the way his knee looked after about two or three months. I mean, Robert and I had a ton of long, long, deep conversations about basketball and him and his, his love for the game and all that. And, gosh, it's unbelievable what he's done. I mean, he's cleared for contact. He's been in contact for a week. He hadn't been in contact in the full court today. This week he'll start integrating into that. But he's been live in half-court contact. And today, I don't know if it's today or maybe next couple of days, he'll get more of it in the full court, maybe not every rep. Uh, but it really been, it's really been unbelievable, kind of what he's done from a rehab standpoint and the energy level. He's already kind of brought our team in the first week back. Were there some times that you didn't think it was going to get there? You know, we had a Robert something, you know, he, we, we had some unbelievable conversations after about two or three months. You work, 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 and you get to that point, you know. He looks at his knee, and it doesn't look great, you know. And, and so we sat down, and I said, Robert, what are we fixing to do? We're fixing to put the ball in your hands for 30 minutes every day. We're fixing to get a smile back on your face. Basketball to do that. And so he did. I said, we just started just standing dribbling. I mean, just really in a spot, just talking, dribbling. Then he got to where he could do standing shooting. And I think it did. It brought kind of joy and basketball back. And, uh, you know, he's, he's such a big part of our team. And uh, so it was. It was – it's tough on all those guys that go through it, especially something that was one of the most significant knee injuries that you could have. And to see what he's doing right now, it really is, Neil. It's, it's phenomenal in kind of his work ethic and how he approached it. You know, at, at, at middle, we probably had our deepest team. I played 10 and 11, you know, and the guys that really deserved to play. I could see, see us playing 10 guys, you know, I really do. Uh, I think that's – that's I'm obviously in the SEC and you go through it with, with nicks and bruises, foul trouble, different things like that, especially our non-conference schedule. So I, I don't know. You know, we'll, we'll find out more and, and probably won't know until maybe, you know, maybe end of November. Uh, but but I really do think I can see our team playing nine, ten, maybe even eleven guys. What's Matt's next step? You had a, kind of a breakout at times last year. You've been around this a long time to see a guy that can take that next leap and become an elite player. No no doubt, no doubt. Matt can, and he's doing it now. Neil, I, I just think that uh, you know he's an elite shooter. We've seen it. Uh, as good an athlete as his position as anybody in college basketball, I think rebounding is the next step. But can he go back and rebound? Can he really go be one of the be excuse me be one of the elite defenders in our league? He, he started driving the ball and getting to the foul line better. Uh, so I'd say really rebounding at a high level, uh, being able to really drive it without Deshaun. He's played a ton of point uh, for us on the trip and even in the in September in our workouts. I think that's really helped him. I think it's helped him a bunch from playmaking. So, yeah, I, I just don't see any reason why, Neil, he can't be one of the very best guards in our league. I asked Matt, but I'm also curious to hear your answer to this. What, what kind of identity are you trying to establish as, you know, for this 2022 team? Yep. You know, I think it all – it's got to start with, you know, effort, toughness, uh, defending, shot blocking, protecting the rim, rebounding. Uh, like I said, 
it'll be the fastest pace team that, that we've had. I thought our first team's pace was good, you know, with those three guards, as good as those guys were all together. Uh, but I do think you will see a team that's going to pitch it ahead, hopefully be athletic in transition, get easy baskets in transition, whether you're on the road or at home. I mean, as you start playing against really good teams, the games get more and more half court because teams do a better job taking care of the ball and, and getting their defense set. So I, I think that you'll see the most athletic, the deepest team, and hopefully a hard-playing group that will compete on a national level in our league every night. How much pressure is kind of on this team this year to improve, and how much pressure are you feeling in that aspect? Oh, zero, <laughs> zero. It's uh, – I mean, I, we're, just, we're going day to day with our team. It's been such an unbelievable group uh, to coach every day. Uh, I just think that in our league, it doesn't matter what sport you coach, the, the competition is, is, is outstanding. Coaches, recruiting has been unbelievable in the league. So we've got a lot of great opportunities. And, uh, you know, we, like I said, you know, just the, the term forward rebels and next play, that's exactly what we're trying to do. And I think our team, I've talked about it a bunch last year, did I think our team could have been in NCAA tournament team healthy? You bet, you know, but it is what it is. So uh, we're looking forward to it. Got a good group and uh, can't wait to get started officially. Anything else for Coach? All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate y'all coming. Thank you.